Hi boys and girls, Northwest Boss Crafter here. So I thought I'd bring you another video today. Um, and this video is going to be relating to air gun calibers and also types of ammunition. Um, now generally speaking, when people for the first time go out and buy an air rifle, The most important thing they're thinking about is what air rifle they're going to buy. And that's pretty much where the thinking stops. But exactly the same was real firearms having many different types of ammunition. Also manufactured by different people to different standards. And out of different materials sometimes. And obviously... There is no consistency there, it's, it's a big, big, big picture, and there's a lot of variables. And obviously, most people generally just don't think about ammunition, but ammunition is pretty important. Obviously certain types of ammunition will do certain jobs better than others. So, we're going to have a, a little look at some of the ammunition that I have and I use. We're going to have a... A bit of a talk about the pros and cons of certain ammunition types. I'm going to go through the different ammunition types. We're also going to have a bit of a chat about the differences between 177 and 22 caliber. Given the fact that they are the major calibers, you can get 0 0.20, you can get 0 0.25. I know that people are now even making a 0 0.50 caliber air gun um, but that's generally speaking overpowered it's um, I think it's an American one so it's not really something that you're likely to see over here if I'm being honest but given the fact that in this country we are mainly looking at 177 or 22 calibers that is what we are going to look at tonight um, and obviously if you know your stuff, you know that 22 calibre is 5.5mm in diameter and 177 calibre is 4.5mm in diameter. So there's a diameter difference of 1mm between those two calibres, which is tiny. Um, now although the difference is tiny, the differences between the actual pallets probably couldn't be any bigger. Because if you have a look here... On the right hand side we've got the 2.2 pellet, on the left hand side we've got the 1.77 pellet. And you can clearly see that there is a fair old difference. And that 2.2 pellet, if I don't drop it, is near enough double the size of the 1.77 and also would tend to suggest you can quite clearly see the difference there. 177's on the right this time, 22's on the left. You can see that the 177, roughly speaking, is around about half the size almost. That means it's half the weight, that means it can take half the power. Um, so, obviously, there is a massive difference between the two calibers. Now, in terms of specifics, and in terms of air gun shooting in general, with the legal limit in this country being 12 foot pound, an air rifle with that power is going to push a 2.2 calibre out with a muzzle velocity of just short 600 feet per second. The 177, however, going to push it out at about 800 feet per second so obviously there is a big difference between the two 200 feet per second is a big difference um, mark my words so obviously speed wise massive massive difference but you've also got a difference in trajectory as well 
because the two twos being heavier and being more prone to wind resistance and also traveling at a slower speed in general means they're more susceptible to wind deflection to air resistance and obviously to gravity as well so we want to give you another example just because you've got a 2-2 pallet and you've got a different 2-2 pallet a different make a different brand doesn't mean they're going to be the same in fact the chances are they'll probably be quite different and just to give you an example most pallets don't come with this information but if you take a look at this lid for my super field pallets which are made by RWS you can just about make out over here in this last little section it says 1.03 gram or 15.9 grains so they are you literally using the same unit of measurement that they use to measure the weight of live rounds that will be fired out of real firearms now obviously that is very very accurate because that is telling you exactly what they weigh now that type of pellet there is a super field pellet made by RWS this for all intensive purposes is near enough the same thing same make slightly different brand it's a, it's a super dome rather than a super field and you can see on this one that it says 0.94 gram or 14.5 grain so it's ever so slightly lighter than the field pallet we've also got another type of RWS um, we've actually got quite a few types of RWS if I'm, if I'm being honest with you the RWS types that I've currently got are hollow points we've got the super field pellets we've got the super dome pellets and then we've got the pointed pellets as well so obviously these are your super point by RWS and they're very similar to the super dome they've got 0.94 grain which gram which is exactly the same and 14.5 grain which is exactly the same so in terms of weight they are exactly the same as the super dome pellets obviously the super field ones are just ever so slightly heavier now that extra weight is going to change the characteristics of the pellet. So obviously depending on the job, you've got two pellets that are extremely similar, but one is ever so slightly heavier than the other one. So obviously minor, minor, minor differences. But like I say, these differences do make quite a big difference. Now the other side of things is, along with just your pellet shape or type and your weight of pellet whether it be in grams or grains they're just a couple of the specifications you've also got the actual design of the pellet now that one there is a normal pointed pellet but what we have here is we have a different brand of pellet now these ones are made by Bisley and Bisley are generally speaking a very 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 good brand of pellet and we have actually got a tin of Bisley Magnums in 2.2 calibre for the hunting rifle there um, and they generally are my preferred hunting ammunition but we've also got this little this little job here little 177 pellet now it is struggling to kind of pick this up guys you can just about make out on that pellet that it does actually have a couple of lines around the top part of it and they're actually triple sealed so it's got three separate seal rings around the pellet um, which is obviously going to groove in the rifling of the barrel and impart a spin on the pellet 
it also those seals obviously create an air seal to get good air pressure so they're actually a better designed type of pallet because they've got the triple skirting obviously most pallets generally speaking have got a single skirt which is just flared out at the bottom um, and in most cases they in theory do have a double skirt because you've also got the top ridge um, at the back of the point but obviously with them there they've got the original skirt on them and they've also got an extra three separate skirts above that which is giving you generally speaking better accuracy and better performance better consistency as well so obviously the main types of ammunition that you'd expect to see would be pointed or rounded but again there's still big differences between them um, for 2.2 for example we have got um, these which are your standard common and garden shit air gun pellets made by SMK they're the sort of thing where if you just want to shoot an air gun grab a load of them jobs are good but generally speaking if I'm shooting for uh, for accuracy um, or if I'm hunting I am not going to be using these pellets these pellets more for plinking um, or messing about more than anything just because they're cheap now obviously this tin here you're getting 500 approximately in there and it was £7 retail these ones here Again, these are some of my preferred hunting pellets, and these are made by Logan, and these are called Logan Penetrators, um, they're non-lead, um, apparently they're the most humane and effective hunting pellet in the world, and generally speaking I tend to agree with them, um, they are pretty much among the best you're going to get. And you can see on there that it does actually give you a grain weight as well, 16 grains. Now they're the heaviest pellets that I have got. Um, they do work quite well in my 2.2 rifle. But for 400 of them, which is less than in that SMK tub, which is 500, it costs £15. So you can see there that it is more than double the price and you're not even getting double the amount of pellets in there. So obviously that price difference generally tells you what you're buying is better quality. It's like with anything guys, you pay peanuts, you get a monkey's work. It does pretty much work that way. Um, some things aren't too bad when they're cheap. Obviously some things generally speaking aren't. Um, pellets um, and ammunition in general is one thing that I'd never scrimp on. Because you might have the best firearm in the world but if you're using shitty cheap ass ammunition in there it obviously ain't going to be very good is it so there you go so moving on from that what we're going to do is we're going to have a, a little look into different pellet types now obviously we've already had a look at your normal rounded type pellets and your normal pointed pellets and that's what most people generally kind of think of when you turn around and you say pellets now obviously we said these RWS here we've actually got hollow points and you can see that there's like a, a kind of divot a depression in the front which is hollow and they are designed for one thing massive trauma they're not designed for penetration they're designed to hit something and give it the most amount of trauma so generally speaking as far as hunting pellets go I actually don't like them I don't think they're humane um, they're not very effective even though that is what they're designed to be for because you don't really tend to use them for anything else or at least you wouldn't tend to use them for anything else um, but generally speaking um, they are good for certain things um, because of the fact that they work the way that they do um, 
if you are shooting at something, for example, and you did not want a lot of penetration, so that whatever you're shooting, obviously the pellet's going to go straight through and come out the other side and possibly damage something behind. So if you're in a position where you've got something fragile behind or it's a bit of a precarious shot and you don't want that level of penetration, I suppose you could switch to that. Um, you're probably not going to get a clean kill with it. And you probably will have to do something else in terms of dispatching whatever it is that you are hunting so that you cause it as little suffering as possible but generally speaking i tend to say not really not really worth the bother especially not for hunting obviously your normal rounded pellets are generally a good all-round pellet they're good for target shooting they're good for field sports they're good for hunting but obviously your pointed pellets are going to be better they are going to penetrate better they'll probably deform less as well um, and obviously with the cleaner penetration you should get a cleaner kill um, it's as simple as that really um, these ones in here these ones are quite special these are made by beam and an american company and they are called crow magnum pellets um, they were quite expensive, you only get 200 in a tin, there's about a tenner for the tin. Um, it doesn't give you a weight on them, but obviously with any pellet you can just as easily weigh it and get the, the weight in grams and figure out what you're working with, so it's not particularly difficult. But they are quite a heavy pellet, they're a very very large pellet. Um, and it's, a, it's basically a bigger, nastier version of a hollow point, similar to the RWS. They're just a bit heavier, a bit bigger. So you generally get a bit more power in them, which makes them a little bit more effective. But again, still, to be fair, I don't really rate them for hunting. Um, I don't tend to use them that much. Um, my opinion may change at some point if I start using them a bit more. But generally speaking, I've got them just because they look pretty awful and devastating. So I thought, oh, I'll give them a go. Um, but there you go. So moving on, we were talking about the Logan Penetrators earlier on. Now, these are my T2 caliber. And what I have also got is I've got a similar version it's not a Logan Penetrator, but it is basically um, the same kind of thing, but it's a 177 version. And this type was actually designed for pneumatic air guns, PCPs. But it also means they work well in CO2 uh, air rifles as well. And obviously I've got a CO2 air rifle. And it's chambered in 177 calibre, which is what they are, 177 calibre. Now you can see with these, the, the main difference with them is... It looks more like a bullet um, than anything else. They're very, very, very sturdy. They're steel. They're not lead. Um, and I mean, I've shot metal with these and they generally don't deform. Um, they've got a, a very, very nice smooth curve on them. I know it's not picking it up amazingly well, guys, but hopefully you get the idea. And obviously, if you want to check these types of pellets out, given the fact that I'm telling you what they are, you can go and have a look at them online and they'll have close-up pictures of each different pellet so you can actually inspect it closer in more detail. Um, obviously, this is just to give you an idea. But they're very, very similar to the Logan Penetrators, which, again, are more of a bullet shape. And, again, they're non-lead. Uh, I do believe they are steel, um, steel alloy, in fact. Um, but again, they're very, very heavy, very, very good quality. Um, with the cheap pellets that you buy, like these ones, you'll tend to find that uh, 500 of them, 200, 200 of them might be 
buggered in one way or another, they'll have dents, they'll have imperfections, the skirts won't be right. Um, so what you'll generally find is you're going to have a massive amount of inconsistency with your accuracy. Um, with pallets like those, you tend to find that out of a batch of 400 like that, you might get one that is deformed that you wouldn't possibly use. But generally speaking, again, they are amazing pellets. And obviously, if you pay a bit more for them, you do tend to get better quality pellets. It literally is as simple as that. We've got these ones here. Milbro. Quite a, a well-known make, I'd say. Um, these ones are 177 calibre. They're for my CO2 pistol. I bought them for the CO2 pistol, and then when I found out how amazing they were, I was like, right, I'll buy more, um, because they are absolutely amazing. Now, these are actually quite cheap pellets in comparison. In comparison, they're more like these SMK ones. Very, very inexpensive. Um, not quite as cheap as them, but still fairly cheap. They're certainly not RWS or Logan Penetrators, anyway. Um, but... They're very, very hard. The actual pellets themselves are very, very hard. Now, this is something else that is going to affect air guns and accuracy. It's the actual makeup of the pellet, how hard it is or how soft it is. RWS are notoriously soft. They're really, really, really soft pellets. Whereas things like your Bisley Magnums, generally speaking, are a bit denser. They're a little bit more solid. Um, just a little bit more robust in general. Um, but like I say, there is a big difference in shooting a hard pellet and a soft pellet in the same type of rifle. Because they will react differently to the rifling in your barrel. And this also has something to do with um, the material that they're using to make the barrel. And obviously how well the barrel's made. Now, what some people have found is that you can have a very expensive barrel and a very expensive rifle in general. And they've actually found that by using cheaper harder pellets they're getting better consistency and better results um, and then there are some people that generally speaking that will find that a softer pellet will give them better performance in their particular barrel and their rifle so literally even the the makeup of the pellet and how hard or soft it is is going to play a big part in how well it shoots out of your rifle or pistol. Um, so there are a lot of things to take into account. Obviously you've got many different ammo types, you've got round heads, you've got pointies, you've got variations on the theme, you've got the ones that look more like sort of bullets, you've got hollow points, um, you've even got things like these, these are pretty weird, these, these are called pile drivers. Um, and they're actually made, I don't know if you, you probably can't read that, but it does actually say at the bottom, Suits FAC Precharged Rifles, so Precharged the PCPs, or Precharged Pneumatics, um, and obviously it's saying Suits FAC, so that means a firearm certificate pre-charged rifle, so that means it's, it's suiting rifles that are over 12 foot pound. Um, high energy retention pellets, now the reason the higher en energy retention is because they weigh an absolute ton. They're the heaviest pellet I have ever seen ever and that's why I bought them. Now at one point I had a rifle um, that was a little bit over the legal limit and I shot these pellets out of it because I used these pellets in it it was shooting on the legal limit which meant it was legal because of the type of ammunition I was using in it 
Now the police didn't see it that way, um, and they decided that they were going to try and kick up a fuss about it, and they actually wanted to take me to court over it. But because I know so much about this stuff, I explained to them outright that if you take me to court over it, you'll lose, you'll lose badly, and I'll make you look stupid, because I'll know the law better than you will, and I'll know about air guns better than you will. At which point they proceeded to say, we'll bring in an expert witness, and I said, you bring anyone you bloody want, because I tell you now, I'll probably outdo your expert witness as well. And what ended up happening was they ended up leaving it. Um, but I know I was within my rights and I know what I was doing was perfectly legal. It was basically them being asses about it. Um, and obviously this is one of the reasons why it helps to know more about this th sort of thing and what you're talking about. Because if you do have a sort of getting any bother over it you're going to be in a much better position to try and sort yourself out um, but the long and the short of it was obviously those pellets are extremely heavy um, and fired out of a, of a powerful enough rifle I mean like I say you, 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 it's devastating absolutely devastating but generally speaking I'm never really ever going to use them in my normal rifles because um, they are a bit too heavy as soon as you start shooting over a distance they're just going to drop on you um, so there you go so obviously within that there we've covered a good few different types of pellets we've covered the fact that the makeup of the pellet i.e. how hard or how soft it is is going to uh, affect things also the design of the pellet i.e. whether it's sort of triple skirted or whether it's just a standard design pellet um, obviously that is also going to account for other things like aerodynamics and wind resistance obviously the the bullet shaped ones like the Logan Penetrator they actually tend to um, be the best in terms of aero, aerodynamics because you've got a ridge at the top of these and then you've got another skirt at the bottom you tend to get the air coming around and creating turbulence behind these little ridges and then it's got another bit to go behind as well and what that actually does is it kind of slows the pellet down more it lets the wind re resist the pellet more which will obviously slow it down quicker take the power out of it quicker um, so obviously in terms of um, that stuff that we've gone through so far there, there's a lot of different things that are going to affect obviously um, how you're shooting um, and how accurately you're shooting and then obviously we've also gone over lots of different pellet types we've also briefly touched on the differences between 177 and 22 caliber so what I'm going to show you now is the PS de resistance quite literally so you've seen all these other types of pellets but you've probably not seen these these here are called Prometheus pellets and quite literally they are ridiculous absolutely ridiculous these tubs contain 125 and they're a tenner ago so I'd say in terms of pellets these are probably the most expensive pellets I've got and the most expensive pellets I'll probably ever buy but that's not the only reason why they're amazing. The real reason why they're amazing is because, as you can quite clearly see there, it is a yellow plastic skirt. So the whole of that yellow body is plastic. 
and you can see the steel core going into it so in terms of the pellet for want of a better way of putting it it's full tongue this metal part which is steel by the way and not alloy steel um, it literally goes all the way through to the very back so like I say for want of a better way of putting it it's full tongue and obviously the tip of that pellet see if you can get a profile there it's literally like a bullet literally it is shaped to be a bullet and nothing else now just to give you an example I've got a nine millimeter round here now that's a proper nine millimeter handgun round and it, this one is a Luger and there we have the Prometheus put it on that black background there now I know this camera isn't amazing and the lighting here isn't amazing but you tell me they ain't the same this is just a miniature version. That's all it is. Do you know what I mean? The other side of things is what you need to realise is when obviously this is fired in a real gun, all of this is just a cartridge which contains the powder. Now the bullet sits a little bit back there because obviously it's tucked into that outer casing. So when you fire it, this edge bit is the bit that's coming off. And that's obviously quite similar to the way that this works because this sort of skirt, this plastic skirt around it um, is like a sabo it's literally like a plastic skirt that will sit around a shell to make it fit in a barrel so that once it's fired out the shell can then sort of split that casing away and just have the actual shell at the end flying off now that these don't work like that because when you do fire them, that plastic skirt does stay on them. However, usually when you hit something with this, even if it's a, a hard target, and now this is the this is the main sort of upside to these pellets, they're literally armor piercing. If you if you could say that their hollow points and their round heads and their point is their armor piercing, it's as simple as that. I've shot hardened targets with them before and all I can say is the results are quite astounding. Um, they surprised even me. I did not think they were going to perform as well as they did. And ever since, I've been absolutely amazed by them. Um, the general speed is a lot, lot higher. Uh, because they're so light. In terms of grains, um, a normal 177 is around about 7 or 8 grains. They're probably about five and a half six so they're extremely light um, now the downside to them is because they're lighter they don't carry as much power they just can't carry as much power as a, as a slightly heavier pellet would do because obviously um, the more weight something has the more power it can carry um, it's there's a simple scientific equation like and it kind of proves the point um, but obviously without that mass you can't carry the power so obviously a heavier pellet is going to carry more power so obviously if I'm out in the field doing a bit of target shooting I might use the super dome pellets which are the slightly lighter rounded pellets and then if I was hunting, I'd probably revert to the super field, which have got that extra bit of weight to them, which means they'll carry that extra little bit of power. Um, so obviously your knockdown power is going to be a bit higher with them. In terms of explaining it into a difference, comparatively, it's similar to going from 
a 9mm up to a 40 calibre or a 45 calibre. The knockdown power in that bigger 40 or 45 calibre round is going to be substantially more because its weight is substantially more. So obviously it, it is comparative like that and it, it is literally that simple. The heavier it is the more weight it's got, the more power it can carry. Now obviously Given the fact that these are light, they don't carry amazing amounts of energy. But, due to their design, they use that energy more efficiently and they will penetrate beyond any other pellet in this, in this video. Uh, and I'd say probably that I know of in general. Um, these here are like the latest advancement in, um, in pellet technology been about for a few years now um, but not many people really know about them um, or have heard about them um, and then somewhere where are they we did have no I must have uh, they're probably in my tap bag or something um, we do we do actually have a different version of them as well I've not got them to hand I'm not gonna go and dig them out um, but basically it's the same thing as that except for instead of having that bullet shaped tip it is literally completely flat it's a flat head version and they're even lighter and obviously given the fact that they're f they're, they've got the flat head on them they trade penetration for knockdown power and stopping power um, so it actually gives you um, a higher knockdown power with uh, your smaller calibre 177 because that's what that's the only calibre I've got that flat head version in the 177 um, so there you go um, I'm gonna leave it there because I can see once again that this turned out to be a longer video than I planned to be fair um, so obviously I won't bore you to death and I won't go into any more detail with it but I've given you a good idea of obviously the fact that there is a great range of ammunition out there and that that ammunition will do different things um, better than other types of ammunition um, and one thing that you need to be aware of is um, if you're going to be hunting you need to use number one a rifle of the sufficient power um, so that you can sort of cleanly dispatch whatever it is that you, uh, you, you're hunting and then also you need to make sure that the ammunition that you're using is suitable and obviously by suitable that is exactly what we're talking about here in terms of different sort of pellet types generally speaking the Bisley Magnums or the Penetrators are going to be hunting ammunition. Your point is, do you know what I mean? Definitely are going to be hunting ammunition. Your Prometheus point is they're going to be hunting ammunition. Um, but things like the round edge, generally speaking, not unless you've not, you've it's the only thing available to you. Um, generally, I'm not going to tend to use something like that, especially in a 2-2. Because the 2 has got the extra diameter, you do need generally more penetration power. So if you are hunting, you do need something like the penetrator, which is designed for hunting, or a pointy. Um, you just you just can't really do it any other way um, to get that clean kill. Um, and a lot of people overrate the 2 twos as well. Everyone, I suppose would think if somebody said air rifle 2-2 two, two, that's what they think they don't ever think 177 um, it's out of people's minds most of the time but in actual fact 177 rifles in general I would say are better as a hunting rifle in general um, for pretty much anything that you're going to be hunting in the UK um, it's literally as simple as that um, and I've only arrived at that opinion after years and years and years of using air rifles um, so there you go, like I say, um, we're not going to go on anymore um, because I have gone on and 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 I'm even starting to get bored of the sound of my own voice so we'll leave it there um, but obviously guys, this is an open-ended kind of thing um, if you want to know more 
um, if you want to know specific information, if there's something that I've missed out um, and that you, you, you wanted to know, um, let me know, put a comment over there um, and I'll get it sorted, I'll either respond or I'll get another video uh, up there for you. Uh, but like I say, hopefully this has been informative, it will give you something to think about um, and at the very least, like I say, um, a bit of fun because uh, I do like having a, having a look at the old ammunition. Um, I f I'll be honest with you, half the time I forget how much I've actually got uh, because this, what we've got out in front of us, is literally just, I don't know, probably about half of it. We've still got absolutely tons more. Um, so there you go. So like I say, hopefully guys, you've enjoyed it, um, if nothing else. Um, hopefully it's been informative for you. And like I say, if there's anything specific that anybody wants to know, um get a message over to us and I will do my very best to get it answered ASAP uh, and give you give you an answer um, and obviously give you the information that you need um, I've already had people actually getting in touch with me um, to ask advice on what they should get um, in terms of an air rifle for the first time um, unfortunately I had to respond with, I need a bit more information than that, um, because like I say, depending on what you're going to be doing with it, um, there are a great many choices out there. So there you go guys, um, ammunition and calibers video, done and done. So Northwest Bushcrafter is signing off, so I'll see you all in a bit.